This is a very good question, and I try to for uh, to break it into two smaller questions to answer it. Let's just start with what's the impact of the uh, assassination or the killing of the honey in Iran. So it does have a both psychological and practical impact. In terms of psychological or symbolic, what it was another serious blow to Iranians' regime's pride, its intelligence apparatus. Hani was a guest, was a has has been killed in the during the day of the inauguration or after it. Uh, in a, under the protection of the, uh, the government, it seems that there, his residency was either uh, run by the IRG, IRG, IRGC or belong to the presidential office given the wars. So that was an emotional and you know uh, psychological response uh, impact. And also we should keep in mind that the Islamic Republic after the April 13 attack on Israel came up with the, I don't want to say wishful thinking, but a peace of mind. Uh, in which they believe that there is a new equation since they responded back to the Israelis attack on the consul in Damascus. And there is a new equation in which Israelis wouldn't attack on Iranians' interests, attack on what has been considered as Iran's soil or Iran's territory as embassies are legally considered. So this attack, this assassination of Ismail Haniye is a serious blow to, on to that equation of deterrence that also Iran tried to uh, establish. Well, in terms of practical impact, which kind of also gets us to the second part of the question, what would be Iran's response? Iran is in a very tangible and also frustrating situation right now. Not only Iran, the entire uh, axis of resistance. Because if you look at what happened during the last 48 hours, we have Ismail Haniyeh, the, the chef of the Hamas, being killed. And also, about a day or hour, less than a day before him, also we have Fuad Shukr, the number two or chief of the staff of the Hezbollah being killed. And I want to emphasize that when we say Fuad Shukur was number two, he technically was actually number one when it comes to the military theater. Because Nasrullah has a Nasrullah is a political figure. His charismatic is well spoken, but he doesn't know much about the practice of, practice of military or military exercises, maneuvers, strategy, and thinking in that way. That was Fuad Shukur. And Fuad Shukur rose specifically grew in two thousand after 2008 when Imad Mughni also been killed in Syria it seems by the Israelis intelligence apparatus again. The death of Imad Mughni, who was a commander of the elite forces of the Hezbollah and also ran his intelligence you know, uh, organization, kind of gave the room to Fuad Sugar to run the military theater as a one-man show. And now he's no longer in the uh, picture. So we have Haniyeh out of the picture from the Hamas flank, and we have Fuad Sugar out of the picture from the Hezbollah flank. And for all of a sudden, if you look at the map you know, from a broader or more comprehensive uh, angle, you would notice that there is a vacuum of power in the high command of the axis of resistance. The death of these two creates a vacuum of the power, which makes an impact on Iran's response and how Iran wants to respond now. Iranians know that they have to respond and they need to respond for a variety of reasons. First of all, it is a matter of domestic and it is a matter of the domestic politics and the matter of the uh, uh, policies. The Islamic Republic has been bankrolling, sponsoring, training militias across the world, Middle East, against the Israel and United States, claiming that it wants to take the role and the, the role of the lead of the oppressed nations against the oppressor, which Israel is among the top of the least members. So now, by not responding back, by not responding to the assassination of the uh, the leader of the Hamas in his own capital, Iran would look weak, or Iran even might look irresponsible. So, and also, Iranian regime has a sort of a the responsibility toward its own base, public base, which they demand the government take an action. They want the government to be assertive and protective. So Iran needs to respond. But how Iran can respond? Iran has two options. One of them is indirect, and the other one is direct. In the indirect option would be the old school application of the uh, proxy groups, you know, having the proxy, uh, Houthis launch a at, uh, drone attack, having the Hezbollah launch a drone attack. But the problem now they have since Hezbollah's number two for Ashukar being killed too, if Hezbollah take the initiative on that front, it wouldn't be Iran's response. It would be Hezbollah's. On the other hand, the attack was carried out inside Iran's territory. And many people are saying, and we still don't know the, the, the general the details of the attack and execution of it, but if it was an actual airstrike, some people say that it was a drone attack or rocket attack within, from the Iran's territory being launched. Some people say that it was an airstrike. If it was an actual airstrike, Iran has an obligation towards base and the so-called axis of the government uh, uh, resistance to respond, otherwise would look weak. So Iran's option with the other option would be direct. And the direct option can be either carry out as it happened in April 13, Iran's launch attacks uh, from its territory against Israel, or it can be a launch uh, 
by Iranian troops stole a direct attack from Iranian bases in Syria or otherwise. But the problem that Iran right now has that it is not in interest of Iran to widen the, 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 the scope and the range and the scale of conflict. Actually, it is in interest of the Islamic Republic to keep the limit and keep the conflict with Israel limited to the Gaza. They have many considerations. They don't want this uh, issue make an impact on the U.S. election. They don't want this issue make the things for the reformist position who promised the escalation will the world was harder. So they might have ended up by carrying out the attack very similar to the April 13. That it is an attack by them, it's a direct attack, so it, it gives them a fixed exit, it gives them an appearance, but also doesn't inflict much of a pain and damage on the Israelis that Israelis never is left with option but answering. However, even if Iran makes it, uh, let's say that a showing a theater of the you know direct attack, still the balls would be in court of the Israelis, and that would be Prime Minister Netanyahu and the you know, IDF making the decision how they want to respond. And if they want to respond harsher, it seems Israel right now is an offensive strategy. If they want to continue on that, we wouldn't know what would be the Iran's response. At some point, Iran might have to be left with no option but to actually apply and influence a real degree of force, which can lead to a full-fledged or a, a broader level of conflict in the Middle East between Iran and Israel, and also here between Iran and the United States of America. But the next the following days will tell us.